Hello there! This is Easy Engineering once again. For today's topic, we're going to talk about quite a sensitive topic, the reproductive system. So please keep an open mind. Have you ever wondered what that is between our legs? Well, for one thing, we use it for when we go pee so that the dirty liquids in our body goes out. But there is a much more important role they do when we grow up, and that is reproduction. Like all living things, we humans reproduce or create offspring. That means making babies. The body parts in creating babies belong to the reproductive system. But first, let us discuss the two types of reproduction, the asexual and the sexual reproduction. Some animals can create their babies through asexual reproduction. That means that they make their babies on their own. Some examples are the corals, hydras, and sea anemones. They use a process called budding. That means a part of their body falls off and it becomes another copy of them. Cool. For most animals like us, we use sexual reproduction. That means that our two sex cells, one from a male and one from a female, join together to create the baby. Now fun fact, did you know that an average woman can give birth to 35 babies in a lifetime? But only if they want to. So if our mothers want more babies, we could have had 34 brothers and sisters. Amazing, right? What are the parts of the male reproductive system? In men, the main reproductive organs are the testes. The two oval-shaped testes sit below the penis in a pouch called the scrotum. This is a skin that constantly controls the temperature of the testes. If you are a boy, you can notice them move on their own. The testes make the male sex cells called sperm. Sperms are too small to see without a microscope, and they are shaped like tadpoles with long tails. The sperm travel through a tube called vas deferens to the urethra and then towards the penis. They mix with the other fluids to form a liquid called semen. Semen is a liquid that contains the male sex cells or the sperms. It also contains some liquid like citric acid which is also present in fruits and many more so the sperm can survive. Now a fan fact, did you know that the semen contains between 200 and 300 million sperm? But usually out of millions of sperms only one can unite with the female sex cell, the others die. What does the male reproductive system do? Basically, the male reproductive system makes semen. The male reproductive system also releases the semen into the reproductive system of the female during sexual intercourse. Remember, only grown-ups and married people like your mom and dad can do these things. Now, during sexual intercourse, a small amount of semen passes through the tip of the penis into the woman's body. The sperm then travels toward the woman's sex cell or egg. And lastly, it produces sex hormones which help a boy develop into a man during puberty. Now let's talk about the female reproductive system. In women, the main reproductive organs are the ovaries. The two almond-shaped ovaries sit inside the lower belly. When a girl is born, her ovaries contain up to 500,000 egg cells. And that's a lot. But Sadly, that's all they get in a lifetime. Two tubes called fallopian tubes connect the ovaries to the uterus. The uterus is a muscular organ that holds a growing baby. So remember, the babies grow in the uterus, not in the stomach. When a girl is about 12 years old, one ovary releases an egg once a month. This process is called ovulation. The egg travels from the ovary through the fallopian tube to the uterus. If that egg does not meet a sperm cell on its journey, it dies. The egg and some blood then pass out of the uterus and through the vagina, a muscular tube that leads out of the body. This is relatable to some girls that go through menstruation. Menstruation is normal vaginal bleeding that occurs as part of a woman's monthly cycle and which can be painful. So how does the female reproductive system work? Other than coitus or sexual intercourse, the female reproductive system produces eggs 
or the ova, which is the female sex cells. It also protects and nourishes a fertilized egg until it is fully developed until the mother gives birth. Mothers should always be careful with their babies since not all pregnancies are successful. Now speaking of pregnancy, how does a woman get pregnant? Sperm enters the woman's body through the vagina. The sperm swim up through the uterus and into the fallopian tubes. If an egg is one of the fallopian tubes, the sperm try to join with it. Once the egg is fertilized, pregnancy or gestation begins. The fertilized egg moves into the uterus. As it travels, it starts to divide into many more cells. cells. There the cells begin to develop into a baby. At first, the developing baby is called an embryo. After about 8 weeks, the baby is called a fetus. In the uterus, the baby grows inside a pouch called the amniotic sac. Then, a bundle of blood vessels called the umbilical cord connects the baby's belly to the placenta, an organ that develops in your uterus during pregnancy. This cord is like a tube that connects the mother and the baby, and then they get cut when the baby is born. After about 9 months of development, the baby is ready to leave the mom's body. The bottom end of the uterus, called the cervix, expands to create a wide opening into the vagina. The muscles of the uterus contract or tighten to push the baby downward. And the baby moves slowly through the vagina and out of the mother's body. Well, technically, the mother pushes so hard so that the baby can come out. And it's very painful. It is said to be one of the most painful feelings in the world. So learners, now we know how important our reproductive organs are. They are not only for peace, but for production. So keep them clean and healthy. That is all for now. I hope you learned something today. Have a nice day.